load sharing with HSRP. I'm going to talk about this document in this video. Um, it says here, uh, HSRP is often used to improve resiliency networks, but this can cause a decrease in network efficiency. The example in this document is two paths from the host network to the server network. Let me just look at the topology, okay? Uh, for redundancy, for redundancy, redundancy, HSRP runs between R1 and R2, either of which can become the active router and take ownership of the HSRP virtual IP address. The second router becomes the standby router and the only and only becomes the active router if the current active router goes down. Okay, uh, the host's default gateway address is assigned as their HSRP virtual IP address. When the hosts need to need to send packets to the server network, they send them to their default gateway or to whichever router is active. Because only one router is active, packets from the hosts to the hosts to the server servers traverse only one uh, one of the two available paths. Dependent upon on which you configure router three, packets that return from the servers to the hosts might or might not might not utilize both return paths. Also, packets that return from the servers to the hosts. Let me read that. Let me read that again. Dependent on, dependent upon on which you configure R3. Okay. Packets that return from the servers to the host might or might not might not utilize both return paths. Also, packets that return from the servers to the hosts do not send to go do not need to go through the active router. In order to utilize both paths from the host network to the server network, you can configure multi-group multi -group HSRP between R1 and R2. Essentially, R1 is, act, is configured with two HSRP groups, for example, group 1 and group 2, and R2 is also configured with the same HSRP groups. For group 1 um, here, R1 is the active router and R2 is the standby router. And for group two, R2 is the active router and R1 is the standby router. Then you can then you configure half of the host's default gateways with the HSRP group one virtual IP address and the other half of the host's default gateways with the with the HSRP group two virtual IP address. This is actually what I uh, followed. So I have I have my own topology here, and I have I am done with the configurations on both R1 and R2 here. So let me just show you the. Well, let me just read it here. Actually, let me read the whole thing here. So notice from the configurations that when the two routers first begin to run HSRP, R1 has a default priority of 100. Okay, it's just talking about the configurations here. And a priority of 95 for group 2. R2 has a default priority of 10 for group 2, group 2 and a priority of 95 for group 1. Therefore, R1, therefore, R1 is the active router for group 1 and R2 is the active router for group 2. This example shows that you can accomplish load balance, load sharing with multi-group HSRP. However, you need to use HSR, HSRP priority and preempt in order to accomplish this. HSRP has no effect on return traffic. The path taken by the return traffic depends on the routing protocol configured on the router. When the note, when the standby priority value and the standby preempt commands are configured, it is mandatory to explicitly mention the group number. If not mentioned, then the value is zero by default. The default group numbers number is zero. Okay. All right. So let me just 
do this uh, do this let me check the status of hsrp on r1 or before i do that let me just show you the config hsrp config on this interface which is the one facing LAN segment or network and this is the same on R2 okay as you can see here R1 is the active router for group 1 because it has a higher priority uh, 105 compared to R2 which is which is only 104 and for group 2 r2 is active actually active because it has a higher priority than uh, r1 and here i'm actually tracking i have a track configured <clears throat> for group 1 and for group 2 i have a track configured as well Okay, so let me just yeah, show standby. You can see here that, okay, let me just check. So this is the virtual IP address for group one, and this is the virtual IP address for group, group two. And we can see that for group one, uh, R1 is active and for group 2 R1 is standby and we can see I mean, we can do the same uh, command on R2 let me see if I can try to fix this okay so for group 2 uh, R2 is active, you can see it here, group 2 active, because uh, again, it has a higher priori priority, which is 105. And for group 1, it is standby because its prior priority is only 104. Okay, and we can also, you know, use this command here, which is basically, I mean, of course, a uh, brief version of, I mean, yeah, so show standby brief. So uh, shorter or brief version of the output. Okay, I'm actually going to do this here. So from PC1, I'm going to trace to this IP address, which is the IP address on loopback zero on R6. Oops, nope, that's not the correct command. So R1, I mean PC1 is actually, it has a, let me just show you first. Yeah, this is a default gateway of this, which is uh, the, con the IP address configured on R1. This is the yeah IP address configured on IP address. Let me just R1. Yeah, this is the IP address <clears throat> or virtual IP address for Group One and PC2 has a virtual IP address for group 2 here so meaning that um, PC1 should use this link here to get to this link on the left to get to this route and PC2 should use this link here to get to that route on the right. And we can verify that by doing a trace route. We 
you can see that here uh, this is the IP address of R1 you can see it here and this is the IP address of ISP1 here and we get to R6 okay so that's the correct path that we expect and on, on PC2 this is the IP address of Uh, hold on. Yeah, okay. This is the IP address of R2 here, and this is the IP address of ISP2, and this is the IP address of R6. So we see that PC1 and PC2 are taking the correct path as expected. Okay, so I'm going to actually try to not try but to shut down the interface on R1 see what happens the LAN interface on R1 so I'm going to shut it down and we should see that R2 should be the active router for both groups yeah it's already the active router after just a few seconds Okay, see that uh, the IPSLA, uh, IPSLA, or IPSLAs are both down. Okay, so let's see. Okay, is it gonna be? Let me check the IPSLA configurations on R2. Okay, it didn't go down. Okay, anyway, I'm going to try to, I'm going to trace route to that uh, IP address again, to the same IP address. I think it's going to take a while actually because, uh, or maybe it's, we are doing the correct, we are doing it wrong. So it cannot ping the, how about this one? Yeah. So R1, I mean, how about standby brief? Ah, unknown, okay. <clears throat> so IPB, I, I mean BGP stack. Status of the BGP peerings. Can I ping it? I should be able to ping it. Or actually, let me try it this way first. Because I should be able to still ping this IP address from R2. Yeah. And this one also. Yeah, so how come it got, how come it went down? That's weird. Down. This is the one on, hold on, just double check. This is the one on group number two. We should not be affected. Okay, so I think. Oh, I didn't check the BGP table actually. Oh, now it went up. It's gonna be weird. <laughs> okay, all right, so let's check. Took a while. 
let's check the oops okay unknown okay I think that's fine both active I mean active for both routers I mean for both groups which is expected try to ping okay now it works now it works okay so yeah it's just it took a li little longer and we saw that the track uh, what do you call it? Track state went up or came up. Let's check the path that uh, PC1 took to get to that uh, IP address here. So now it's choosing R2, okay, expected in ISP2, okay, uh, R6. And same here, R2, ISP2, okay. <clears throat> yeah, that's expected. I'm going to, oops. Destination port reachable. Okay, not gonna worry about that, but uh, I can ping that IP address. That's fine. I can ping it as well. So I'm going to unshut that interface. And we should see the We should see that PC1 should take this path to get to that uh, IP address. As because that's the original settings <clears throat> or path. I think it's going to take a while. Again, we see that the track went uh, came up. Let's check this. Oops. Let's me go to R2. Okay, still active. Yeah, it's gonna take a while. Okay, still active. Still active. I mean, it's still standby. <clears throat> Let me actually do this command. Okay, done. I mean, looks good. Looks good as well. Show this. This router should come back as the active router for group one because preempt is configured as we saw earlier yeah so now if i do standby brief it's now it's the active for it's the active router for group one in a standby for group two which is expected and if we check the same command or output on r2 we should see the opposite or reverse <clears throat> So, reversed settings, I guess. So for group two, it's the active router, and for group one, it's the standby router. So that's all I wanna talk about. Uh, I mean, that's how you can uh, do load sharing with multi-group HSRP, as it says what the title says here Lage or lo load sharing with multi-group hsrp all right so that's all i want to talk about in this video thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one